gang, welcome back. We're talking about today, fin walled pressure vessels. It's a new chapter. So this is kind of a, the start of the chapter, what's called combined loading, okay? And this is a different, we're, today we're gonna have some new equations, yes, and a different way to calculate some sigma stress, some normal stress, okay? So I want to kind of get this kicked off here, and I want to show you some thin wall pressure vessels, okay? Some pressure vessels that you may be familiar with. Number one, just a spherical uh, pressure vessel. Maybe you're driving down the highway and you drive past a big chemical plant or something, and you see these kind of tanks sitting out there. Wonder what they got in there, okay? Or big, just cylindrical tanks, just big round tanks that are just have straight sides on them. Or perhaps you have one of these in your garage, an air compressor, compressor, which is a combination. It has a cylindrical body, but it has hemispherical ends. So this one has kind of the properties of both of those tanks there, okay? So we're talking thin wall pressure vessels. <clears throat> that is gonna cause if you're a little piece of material that lives on the outside of these tanks, this tank, that tank, those tanks, what are you feeling, okay? Well, you'd be feeling some stress because you're being pressurized, all right? And there's really two kinds of stress that you're gonna feel. These are our new equations for the day. Number one, we call hoop stress, okay? And hoop stress is sigma, is P R over T. And the other one is longitudinal stress. And this one is P R over two T. Now let's talk about these stresses here and what they mean, okay? Number one, hoop stress. Think about a hoop, okay? A hoop is like a circumference here. So think about this hoop right here that goes all the way around that tank. Well, guess what? There's another one here, and another one there, and another one there, and the pressure in each one of those hoops is the same as that tank starts to increase in diameter. That material is being stretched. It's in tension, isn't it, okay? And so that is given by this equation here. Now, what are these numbers here? What do these letters mean? Well, the P, the P is for pressure, Is pressure always positive? Can it ever be negative? Well, yeah, you could have a vacuum chamber, couldn't you? The outside atmospheric pressure could be higher than the internal compression of the, the pressure of that tank, right? So it could be a negative pressure. R is the radius. And I'm gonna put inner, okay? It's the inner radius, not the outer radius, okay? Because this wall, this this uh, this cell, this pressure tank does have a wall thickness, right? And so, if you were talking outer re diameter or outer radius, you would have an extra wall thickness on that, right? So, how do you remember that? Well, where's the pressure inside the tank? <laughs> where's the radius inside the tank? Okay, so it's easy to remember uh, which one. It's a common mistake is to use the wrong radius, right? That number right there. Don't do that. Okay, and then T, thickness, okay? And that's the wall thickness. How thick is the material on the outside of that tank, okay? So this is hoop stress, sigma H. And you'll see that on the cylindrical portions of tanks, okay? So on this vertical tank, maybe this is a, a, a tank that's holding some kind of a liquid, okay? Now, as we know, as I go down in a liquid, if it was filled all the way to the top, as I go down, what's happening? Well, according to rho GH, right, the pressure is increasing as I go down in depth toward the bottom. And so if you do stuff like a rocket engineering, okay, they're, full, they're, they're a pressure, pressure vessel that looks like this, cylindrical, but they're trying to save weight. So the thickness on the bottom of the rocket will be thinner as it goes up because they're trying to say, wait, because there's not as much pressure on this hoop as there is on that hoop down there at the bottom. That's kind of cool stuff, right? Okay, and then over here, 
right? We have hoops here. There's one there and there and there and there. And all along the cylindrical portion of this. So if I'm a little piece of material right here, I'm getting stretched because of the increase in pressure inside that tank, okay? Longitudinal stress, we see that in these spherical tanks, okay? So if you're driving down a highway and you drive past a chemical plant and you see these spherical tanks, okay? The stress here everywhere is longitudinal stress, okay? Because it's trying to expand in all directions at the exact same time, okay? And look here, it's over 2t. It's the exact same equation, but over 2t. So what does that mean? That means that longitudinal stress is half as much as hoop stress is. Half as much. So if you see these tanks here, right, they have sigma equals PR over 2t stress. So if the stress is half as much, that means that I can have twice as much pressure in that tank as I do in that tank, right? So if you drive by one of those plants and you see these spherical uh, tanks, these are the ones you want to avoid because this is usually where the high pressurized gases are, things that you need to stay liquid, things under very high pressure. Um, this is the stuff that you don't want to be around if, it go, if things go sideways, okay? So that is, uh, if you see these uh, longitudinal tanks, that's why they are that shape, because these are easy to make. You just take a piece of steel, you put it in a slip roll, you roll it, you weld down one seam, boom, you've got a cylinder. But how do you make a 20-foot a diameter, let's say, uh, spherical tank? You almost have to weld it like a soccer ball together, right? You have to weld little triangular-shaped pieces together to form this. So these are very expensive to manufacture, where those are less expensive. But, like I said, the stress is half as much, so some situations call for these kind of tanks. And again, here on the ends, right, because the pressure is trying to push the ends off that tank, on the end of the tank, I have sigma equals PR over 2T, and on the hoop of the tank, I have sigma equals PR over T, okay? So anyway, that's kind of an introduction to thin wall pressure vessels, okay? We're gonna work some problems. We're gonna use these equations here, the hoop stress and the longitudinal stress, to solve some problems. And we're gonna start off on the easy one. We'll start off on this guy. And then we'll graduate to uh, harder and harder. So there you go. There's your introduction to thin wall pressure vessel. One more thing, what is a thin wall pressure vessel? What makes it thin? is R divided by D. We say that needs to be bigger than 10. So the radius divided by the, di the, the D, not D, T, sorry. R divided by T, the thickness, needs to be bigger than 10. So let's say that this tank here, or maybe that tank there, whatever, um, let's say the diameter was 12 inches and the wall thickness was 0.125, an eighth of an inch. Let's see, what is that? Where are you, calculator? Here he is. Okay, so 12 divided by 0. 0.125, bam, 96. Okay, so that's way bigger than 10. So we would say that's a thin wall pressure vessel. You're gonna get all thin wall pressure vessels in your, in your solids book, in your mechanics and materials book, because the uh, thick, thick wall pressure vessels do not abide by these equations, okay? So only the thin wall pressure vessels follow uh, these stress equations. All right, I hope that helped. Let's work some example problems and let's make some sense out of this. I'll see you on the next video.